Hello everybody and welcome back to another JavaScript tutorial. So in this video, we're going to be talking about for each loops or for of loops. Now, essentially, this is a way to iterate by element or by item rather than by index. Now, if you don't know what that means, that's totally fine. I'm just going to start with a very basic example showing how we iterated through a array in the previous videos. So in the last video, we did something like, you know, var ARR equals and then we had an array and maybe we had something like Tim. Joe and Bill and when we wanted to print out all of the elements in this array well what did we do we made a for loop and we said for um, var i equals zero i is less than arr dot length and then we said i plus plus and then what we did here is we simply console dot log arr at index i now we know that works, we showed that in the previous video, but is there an easier way to do this? Because essentially the only reason we have this I counter here is so that we can access the elements of the array, right? By going up one index each time. Well, if I don't care about this counter variable I, I don't really care if it's one, I don't care if it's two, I just wanna get the elements. There is actually a better and easier way to do this. And that is called a for of loop. Now what I can actually do is say for, and in this case, I'm gonna say let, and we'll just do element um, of error. Now, I know this seems like a strange kind of statement here, but essentially what this means is we're gonna take elements from or of the array. Now, what this is gonna do is loop through each element in our array and every loop make this variable element equal to that element. Now I know this is confusing because I've used the word element, but let me just illustrate to you what this does. So I'm just gonna comment out this like that and we'll leave this one here and let's just go to our console and have a look here. And you see we get Tim, Joe, and Bill. Now what happens here is in our first loop, we set the element variable element equal to Tim in our second loop, we set it equal to Joe, and then we set it equal to Bill. And this means that we no longer have to do this thing where we get the length of the array, we increment a counter, we set the counter to zero, we do the index at i. It's just a lot cleaner and easier when all you wanna do is access the element. And that is pretty much how you use this um, you know, of array. Now I will show you here that this says let, right? But we can make this nothing. So if we make this nothing, that, that's fine. We can do that. But the reason we might want to specify, for example, like const or, or let here or var is whether we're going to change this value or not. And I want to show you how this works. So I'm going to say let element of ARR. But what I'm going to do is print out the element. Then I'm going to change the element. So I'm going to say element equals five. And I'll print the element again. And what I'm going to do is actually print the array before and after we do this. And this is kind of a challenge for you guys. So what I'm going to do is console.log the array and I'll uh, log it at the beginning too. So what I'm going to do is print the array. I'm going to loop through all the elements in the array. So Tim, Joe, and Bill. I'm going to start by printing out that element. Then what I'm going to do is change the element. So I'm going to change it to five. I'm going to print it again and then I'm going to print the array afterwards. And my question to you is, is the array before going to be the same as after? Because, well, element is one of the elements from the array. So if I change it in here, does it actually change the value here or not? That's what we're looking for. So let's save this and let's run this and let's have a look. And no, it does not. It does not change. So we get Tim five, Joe five, Bill five, and we can see the array is the same as before. Now, the reason this happened is because we defined a new variable, which actually stored this specific object inside of it. And then when we change that, all we're doing is changing the variable element. We're not actually changing the original list. Now that's worth noting. That's very important. So make sure you understand that concept because now I'm going to do the same thing, except not with a for of loop. I'm going to do it with this regular for loop and show you. So let's get rid of all of this. And remember, it's just let or const or whatever you want element of ARR. If you don't think you're going to be changing this element here, so whatever this is, you can make this a const. And that simply means that you can't change it or it won't change doesn't really matter. That's for more advanced use. Typically, you're not going to have to deal with that. But anyways, let's do another example now. So keep in mind what I just showed you while we do this. Now, what I'm going to do is print ARI. Okay, but now what I'm going to do is change this element to equal to five and then print it again. So I'm essentially doing 
the same thing I did in the other loop, except we're just using a different way of looping through the elements. And then what I'm going to do is print error, and I'll print it beforehand like this. So this code is almost identical to what I just had below, except rather than iterating by element, which is what we were doing before when we did of array, we're iterating by index, right? So we're using the indexes of the array to access the elements. So what happens now if I change ARRI to five, does that actually change this array or does it just change some local variable inside of this for loop? Well, hopefully you guys know the answer to this, but let's just run it and have a look here and notice that the array after has changed to all fives. It's not the same as the array before. Now, the reason for this is we are not storing these values in a variable when we're accessing them and changing them. We're actually getting them directly from the array. So if I say something like, you know, array two equals five, well, that's obviously going to change the actual array, right? We're not just going to change a temporary variable that we've had inside the loop like we did below. So that's very important. That's worth noting. And, you know, based on what you're going to be doing, if you're going to be manipulating the array, you may want to do it like this, right? You can't loop through the elements of the array if you're going to be manipulating it because you don't have access to actually change the values, right? Now that is pretty much it for the for of. Um, I will show you that you can do it through strings as well. So if I say like var x equals hello, what I can actually do is say for and we'll say letter of x. And then what I can do is just say console.log letter like that. Let's have a look here. So there we go. We get hello printing it out like that. So just showing that you can actually iterate through a string. I believe you can also index a string. So we'll do an example with that in case I hadn't shown it before. So we'll say int or sorry, var i equals zero. I is less than, and in this case, x dot length i plus plus. I think we need to not have a space there. And then console dot log x at i. Let's see what we get here. When we run it, we get the exact same thing. Yeah, so you can actually iterate through a string. A string is iterable. And by the way, I know I've said this word iterating. That simply means looping through or, you know, looping through all the elements, right? So yeah, that has pretty much been it the for of or for each loop, whatever you want to call it. Pretty straightforward, but definitely useful when you just want to loop through the different elements of an array. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next JavaScript tutorial.